Hello and welcome to Follow Everton. This is a reflection on Boreham Wood and also looking ahead to the Spurs game on Monday night. I've got Steve with me. Uh, hi, Steve. Hi, Ryan. How are you doing? Good, thank you. Thanks for coming on uh, this this afternoon. Um, so first and foremost, before we just uh, talk about the Boreham Wood game and, and obviously moving on to Spurs, Leeds lost this uh, this morning to, to Leicester, a hard fought win, but that's uh, that's really good in the in the relegation sort of fight, isn't it? To to bring Spurs uh, to bring Leeds into the sort of danger zone, so to speak, and and Leicester getting big three points, um, it's a good result, isn't it? It's definitely a good result for Everton that, and the fact that um, we're looking at results from outside highlights how desperate it's become in the league. But there are still. 14 matches to go, right? So I think that it's not panic stations yet, but I think every point and every game seems to have that much more importance. And mm. with us being sort of glued to these other games that we would never normally be batting an eyelid at on a Saturday morning, I think it really yeah. reflects on the state of the situation. Um, a few games today obviously taking place. Burnley uh, playing Chelsea shortly. Obviously, we're, we're, we're hoping for... Um... Uh, you we're hoping, get this on this show. We're, we're hoping that we're hoping, obviously, Chelsea can put Burnley to the sword and 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 keep them in the relegation zone. And obviously, that Newcastle and um, Brentford all lose uh, this weekend. But it's really nice to see Leeds losing. Um, it's quite annoying because we'd be rooting for Leeds it, it, traditionally to beat Leicester and you know in the top six sort of fight. But you know, times and have changed and needs must. Okay, so moving on, let's talk about Boreham Wood first and foremost. Not a vintage performance by any stretch of the imagination and actually slightly embarrassing to go in nil-nil against a non-league team. I mean, let's let's not beat around the bush. They are a non-league team. They're five at fifth, um, you know, in the fifth tier of of English football. It wasn't a good 45 minutes. Um, Would you put that down to, Steve? Do you think that a mix of the flat atmosphere and also the team selection or... Do you think Everton are, are you know, notorious for, for lowering themselves to the level of the opposition and raising their game against the better teams? All sorts of factors, Ryan. I mean, it was a difficult night to sleep on and we had a lot of activity on Twitter spaces. Lots of uh, disappointed blues. I mean, a 2-0 to them, sort of, it almost felt like a draw. I mean, the, the thing is, we don't know what they were told before the game. We don't know whether they were sent out and said, look, be careful, don't get injured. He wanted to rotate the squad more, but he couldn't. He had to play players that maybe he was preferring to rest for mm. uh, Monday. And also, you know, they just played a hard game against City where we didn't have the ball for a lot of it. So He did say Damari Gray and Gomez were going to start, but they weren't fit. So you're right in that. Mm, So he just doesn't have the, you know, Lampard doesn't have the squad depth really to do what he wants to do. We've gone out and basically this is happening time and time again. For you know, this is a a chronic issue with Everton is that basically they match the opposition. So if the opposition are really tough tackling and big big team or, or or you know we'll go after them. If they're a lower league team or they're sort of fighting for survival, we tend to lower ourselves to whatever level we're playing at. And Mm. um, that's not a good way because we've seen that we can go out and basically take the initiative to a team. And I think Lampard in his interview said he was, you know, disappointed with the first half performance. Well, that's putting it mildly. I mean, it will have been the worst headache I've had all year from that, from, from that match. And uh, from, from the fact is that you should be able to break down. I mean, there's over a hundred places between the team and everyone says, okay, they're not postmen and they're, they're, um, they're professional footballers, but there's over a hundred places between the sides and Everton should have had a, a way to sort of a game <clears> plan <throat> to break them down better. But it really wasn't until Richarlison, a player that I'm sure Lampard wouldn't have wanted to send out there, yeah. came on, Everton started to do things, they had a bit more momentum, they could move the ball about a quick, bit quicker. The whole team were lethargic, that that was the underlying, underlying factor in the match. Um, Looked you know, a little bit lacking few, of energy, of, didn't they? There are a number of mediocre performances. Energy you, you is touched. what we need and hopefully it goes out on Monday and puts that energy to, to a test. You touched on some really good points there. I think the the energy, the lack of mobility, certainly in the back line, didn't help us because we struggled to to bring the ball out from the back and and find options. And obviously the Ben Godfrey uh, injury it seems to be 
he seems to be close to coming back to the first team, so we'll help us. But against Boreham Wood, we struggled to play out from the back well enough, I felt. Um, Michael Keane was very, very slow in distribution. And the five at the back was the wrong option, wasn't it? We didn't need three in the back line. We needed just the two defenders because Boreham Wood really didn't offer anything whatsoever. Yeah. But That's it's right. that concern. It is, uh, you know, not being able to break teams down against the low block. And you look at the team that played for us, there was no real flair in there. You've got Andros Townsend and Anthony Gordon. But aside from that, there wasn't anything in any of the positions that made you think there's no creativity here and there's no flair. No. Um, so obviously, you, we can't take an awful lot from that game. I think it's just one way you're through and you, you have to move on mm. because actually it would lead you into thinking we haven't got much, you know, of a chance against Spurs because in fairness, well, it highlights the many players. They, they said before the game on ITV, because I didn't get to this one, they said to the game, you know, it's like, you know, if it was in a boxing ring, they wouldn't be allowed. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's allowed in the FA Cup. And every single minute that went on in that first half, I thought, come on, when are we going to get the breakthrough? I mean, I, I know you missed half of the first half an hour. I don't know if you've had the chance to catch up. That was one I of the worst that, yeah. watches that I've seen. I mean, it's embarrassing, but we did disallow a goal and Rondon missed a really clear header. Now, if that had gone in and it goes 4-0, and you think you come out of Bournemouth at home and you've got a clean sheet, you won 4 0, it's okay. But the fact it was only two, and it was quite late on that we got the second goal. Uh, mm. Credit to Rondon, probably had his best game, but you know, it, it's maybe a. Look, we're not trying to be. We're not trying to come on here. We're not trying to be negative. negative at all. I mean, it's great just... that we're through, but if we play like that at Palace, we're out. Yeah. yeah. So Smart it's time. academic. We've got to go out and put the. And all of these teams, I mean, we're. We're a bit of the yo-yo home and away at the moment, and the home form has turned around. The away form is dreadful, to say the best. But yeah. if you look at the seven Spurs games, the last games, they've pretty much won one draw, won one loss, won one loss, won loss. And then are um, they on a loss it, or a win? <laughs> it, well, this is the thing. They would think home to Everton. They would be looking at us going, right, well, they're on a terrible form. They're awful away. They're probably going to come to us on Monday with a bit of a hangover. Um, but they lost themselves the night before against Middlesbrough. And that means that they're going to have to pick themselves up from mm. a, a, a defeat at a, yeah. a lower, you know, a we'll, championship team. We'll come, in, we'll come on to Spurs in a, in a couple of minutes' time. Um, and obviously talking about on Antonio Conte and what he said in his interviews, etc. But, but you know, the Boreham Wood game, you would have wanted Everton to have won more convincingly. Uh, in the end, the, the substitution of Richarlison, as you said, changed the game and Everton had less players in the back line doing nothing and more of a threat. Eventually found their way through. Never really looked convincing or looked like scoring. Obviously, we were in total control, but in terms of being a dynamic offensive side i think there's there's improvement i think but... you said that when you said the form formation from the start that was a big deciding factor because setting up with almost five at the back against mm. a non-league side or even any other league side it wasn't really setting... five it was a three but you didn't need it the was three a there three but not with yeah Alan it just didn't work and actually when he changed it to a four four two i think lampard managed to like get the, the penetration in our fullbacks were all, a lot wider in that formation because of the Alan Alan Decore in the middle. We were mm. wider and we were able to get more width from that than we were when we were three, three or five, whatever way you want to look at it. Definitely worked better with the two two defenders and the the one sitter rather than the three. It's a no win game. Sitters. I mean, you're home. It's a sellout crowd. I mean, come you know, credit to everyone who went sellout crowd. Boreham Wood only get 1,000 on average at, at their ground and we get 39. I bought a ticket. Board. I had yeah. a ticket, gave it to dad. Um, if you're new to the channel, I'm Ryan, channel host. It's Stevie with me, my brother. We also got another brother of the, the Grant brothers on here, David Basil. You'll know him as he's got COVID. Don't know whether you know this, Steve, but he's got coronavirus. I mm. uh, don't know whether I'll be laughing, but um, so we don't, I don't know when I'll next see him on here. Wishing him a speedy recovery. Um, uh, we've also got Mabsy. I think he's a bit busy at the moment, but it's good to have Stevie on here for a chat and, and I can see his face has dropped because of the COVID. Um, mm -hmm. Come on, get that out of your head for the next 10 minutes. <laughs> well, I just don't, I don't know. So many people are getting COVID and then they're not really being symptomatic. And my, my wife just did a test and she, she thought she had COVID and she doesn't. I mean, 
you just don't know it can affect different people in different ways but uh let's hope that uh that david gets uh better soon um we'll get basil back on hopefully very quickly um looking ahead to the spurs it'll be fine stevie looking ahead to the spurs game now monday night tottenham hotspur um at the tottenham hotspur stadium the glorious uh you know it's a massive stadium state of the art it's a it's a it's a fantastic piece of um engineering isn't it really but we're going to go there we've won there once before we won during the covid calvert lewin with the sat piece Spurs, as you touched upon before, are a bit of a yo-yo team at the moment. And Antonio Conte said they've had 20 years of inconsistency and that any manager would find it really difficult um, in those shoes. Now, Everton team news. Um, Calvert-Lewin should be available and Damari Gray will be available after missing the Boreham Hood game. And Andre Gomez is back in training. But the game will come too soon for England defender Ben Godfrey. He will be back potentially next Sunday against Wolves. So <laughs> with that in mind, you'd expect something quite close to the teams that we've seen in previous Premier League games. But Damari Gray, obviously, and Calvert-Lewin back available will give the manager some food for th food for thought. Um, you'd expect Seamus Coleman to return in at right back. Um, and with Ben Godfrey and Yerry Mina still absent, there isn't much choice but Mason Holgate and Michael Keane. Um, and then I'm going to ask you, really, because when we talked about the team news now, in terms of the selection there, I haven't really, there isn't really many options. Those back three pick themselves, but at left back, the question to you now uh, in filling this starting 11, Mikalenko, do you give him another go if he's fit? Apparently he had a dead leg. I'm sure it'll be John Joe Kenny, to be honest with you, but where do you go with that? Do you think you have to give Mikalenko a run of games? You know, he's the long-term left back at the club, or do you persist with uh, John Joe Kenny, who's been reasonably faultless? Uh, without being spectacular in, in this sort of short spell in charge uh, under Lampard? Yeah, it's a good question, right? Because I think it's there's no, not a really a, a win-win situation here. Is First of all, it depends on his fitness. If there's any doubt, you know, we can't afford to put people in. And the same goes for calvert though. And, it's, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if he's on the bench. With, yeah. with Mikolenko, I think if he's fit, you know, it's, it's only three or four days between the matches. I, I just can't see him going. And I think Kenny's going to play. I think Coleman will go right back. Um, you know, we desperately so you go need for Godfrey. Kenny's going to play. Uh, yeah, I think I think he will play safe. Um, mm. Just really, I just don't think he's going to take any risks um, if he's just come off with a dead leg. It's not like there's a week between the game or that. It's, it's just three days. And they will have been travelling up today. Uh, you would think, uh, well, maybe not today, but they'll be travelling up the day before the match tomorrow mm. uh, rather than on game day, staying in a hotel. And I just can't see two days later. I just can't see him going. You know, it's not going to mm. work for me. Um, OK, um, thanks, Steve. It, it, moving into midfield, then, Alan Decore both played 90 minutes of, or more or less 90 minutes, I think it was, against Boreham Wood. And I'm not sure they would have had Andre Gomez been, it's suddenly gone very dark in here, had Andre Gomez been available and Van der Beek and Deli Ali, which were cup tied, you'd expect Van der Beek to come straight back in to the midfield and, and stick with the 4 3 3 that was so successful against Man City. Um, Van der Beek, Allen, and Decore in the midfield with Damari Gray uh, on one wing. Now, I don't think Deli Ali is quite ready to start and I don't think he will at Spurs. But Damari Gray and Anthony Gordon, you'd expect the two of them in there with Richarlison up front and Calvert-Lewin being fit enough for the bench. But the question mark is, and I think most people would agree with that team that I've just mentioned, if Calvert-Lewin is 100% medically fit and can start and can put in 90 minutes, would you be inclined to switch to the 4-4-2, drop one of the midfielders out, maybe an Alan, uh, and go Van der Beek and Decore, Gray and Gordon on the wings and Richarlison and Calvert-Lewin up front, or would you say, no, 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 I'm going to stick with the 4-3-3, three, three, pretty much the same team that played against Man City. So the floor is yours. What would you do? Well, I think that we played so well against Man City. And uh, it's interesting because that was a defeat, but felt like a win. And then we won. And then it felt like a defeat. Um, I think you can't drop Allen and Decore on their performance against Man City. Hmm. And everyone knows what a shocker Gomez has. Apparently, he's been out injured. So I think Alan and Decore. I think he was bombed team. out. Van der Beek is a definite, you know, mm. really at the heart of that. To be honest, he's been the best player for the last few weeks. De 
Uh, Damari Gray, you know, I'd bring him in on maybe on the left. Uh, have Richarlison at top. And Townsend didn't have a good game at all against uh, Bournemouth. But if Calvert-Lewin is out, then, you mm. know, he's got a shout. And I think he might play a bit more defensive, you know, sort of we're away from home. It wouldn't at all shock me if um, yeah, if we played Rondon. It, it, it just wouldn't shock me. I, I think that, you know, because he's hit the net twice there and we're going into it, you know, we might want to hold up the ball and otherwise the ball's just going to keep coming back. We don't want to get too isolated. It just wouldn't shock me if he doesn't play, um, you know. If I'd be it. shocked if Rondon plays. I'd be... I, I don't mind playing Spurs, I'll be honest with you. I think we haven't had the quite the rub of the green against them recently when we should have. Um, I might be inclined to put Richarlison on the right side of midfield um, with Calvert-Lewin up front and Damari Gray on the left. And I think Gordon maybe... I'd leave him out for this one, potentially, just to accommodate Calvert-Lewin to accommodate Gray and Richarlison and to make sure we've still got the three solid midfielders in there. Because That's I think an Richarlison's ideal situation, still there Ryan. That's ahead an of ideal Gordon. situation, that team you named. But you've got to base mm. it on the fact that we've got 14 games and an FA Cup quarterfinal still to play. Calvert-Lewin, yeah. if he's anywhere near not fully fit, you can't play him on this first game back. You've got yeah. to put him on the bench. We saw what it was like when he was in, being embedded back into the team after that long-term injury. He just wasn't at his best and it gets frustrating. When you see that, Richarlison's done really well when he's played up for it on his own. And so it wouldn't shock me if he does that again. Um, mm. He played really well against Man City and, and pretty decent when he came on against Boreham Wood, although he's a Brazilian international against a non-league team. But I think the Man City game... Really <laughs> Brazil's well number front. nine against... Um, I would say Man City playing up front on his own did awfully well. He yeah, was supported brilliant. by other players. The, the players were more compact and more up for it anyway. Um they were very effective against Man City. They would have won against any other opposition on 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 that day. Um, Spurs then obviously uh, touched on Antonio Conte. I think he he was not going to last there. I think he'll be walking out of Spurs soon um, if it continues. Just from some of the stuff he said, they had a lot um, of change over the managers, not as much as us, but you know their fans get impatient and um, rightfully so. They spent decent money and they've got one of the best forwards in the world. Um, Steve, got a huge, huge stadium. So you know their expectations are higher. Steve, I've got a question for you in the comments about Abramovich at Chelsea. We'll save that to the end if that's okay, um, and, and just stick with with Spurs. Let's keep on onto this for now. Um, Lucas Moore is going to be back, and Rodrigo Bentacur coming back from injury, but they're still without um, Oliver Skip and Tanganga. Cal, um, Harry Kane's hit a bit, little bit of form, hasn't he, unfortunately? Uh, turned it on at Man City. But then they, they lost to Middlesbrough. Um, they lost to... There was a team, I can't remember. We needed Spurs to win and they bottled it. can't remember. Was it one of the... Burnley it was. Mm, so you, you don't know what Spurs enough. you're going to get. But you know they, they play like hybrid formation. They've got a contest, very specific style of play. They're going to be very aggressive. They've got very talented strikers in Son um, and Harry Kane. So they're going to give us a good game. It's going to be difficult Monday night under the lights in a big stadium. I'm sure you'd love to be there um, with your Everton scarf and your you got your any spare tickets hat. for us? No, you should have asked Mabsy uh, <laughs> before you sold them. Um, but uh, Everton, the approach in this game, would you like to see us go for it? Go and press Spurs, high up the pitch and, uh, and try and make Spurs bottle it as they have done in a lot of games? Uh, I mean, you were looking but at two of I the think, biggest bottle you know, jobs in the league, I, but would you like to see I, us maybe I, step back, soak up some pressure and, and do what we did against Man City a little bit more, which was a mix of pressing, a mix of dropping off, a mid-block, and then go and um, punish them, really, and try and get the goal? I, I, that, that's what I expect to see. I think I expect to see a low-block style sit behind the ball, try and get them on the break. I'd love it to be more enterprising, but, the, you know, we need to be realistic with the side Lampard the won't play like that though Stevie he hasn't in any of the games he's never played the low block I think it, he does the mid block mm. like well, we did against by definition, yeah what well, it, it, it's whatever works for, I think a similar performance to Man City would be great but we just don't play the same at home as we do away in the crowd yeah okay fair enough you know have a massive factor on that and I think the onus is on Spurs I think a point would be a really good result for us 
but both teams don't seem to draw games and therefore um you know i want to be optimistic and i want to go out there and it's about time some var decisions went our way and, we'll get a dodgy you penalty know, you know it's Would not you just want? that apparently we've dropped we've lost a whole a few a good few points from var decisions this year that have been costly and you know we were a few games behind some of the sides that are in the bottom half and we need to you know get a bit of a run going now because we don't want to mm. be on the last five games thinking about this sort of situation we we need to go to Spurs and get a point. If we can get all three, I'd just be over the moon. I just can't see it happening, but I think he needs to go out with more, high, you know, the pressing game and the intensity that we saw uh, before the Boreham Wood game. Because if he goes out and we're lethargic, we'll, we'll get mauled um, because they've got such a good, good uh, offensive lineup. And and you're right about Harry Kane. He seems to always come into form when he's just about to play us. And you know, with Michael you Keane at centre half, script. you can sort of write the script. But I'd be quite happy if it was goalless. Yeah, I I, I, don't, I know really it can well, come across a little bit negative, but I think you are being realistic. You, you've got Harry Kane and Son up against Keane and Holgate. You've got well, potentially I don't want to give Georgia you a story Kenny. that we're going to go there and win. 3-1 three, three, and, and that we're getting get two breakaway goals. But why can't we under the Lampard with these players? Because we need to be realistic. Like The, the side and the form, and, and it's not just even this year, it's this, you know before this year, but this year we are dreadful. The last 15, 20 games have just been relegation form. And we can't be expecting to be do, like an overnight turnaround. We need a couple of wins at home that are convincing. Mm. For me, I'm taking it a little bit more positively. I'm, I'm looking at this and thinking Boroughwood was absolutely tragic. I'm not going to lie; I thought it was embarrassing to to well, only tragic win two would have been losing on penalties. Right? Okay, but yeah, okay, it was it Which was a bit embarrassing. Done, huh? Yeah, it was embarrassing yeah. to 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 only win against a non-league team. I'll be lying if I didn't. With if I told you I didn't think it was going to penalties and we were going to lose on pens at half ten at night. Yeah, that you've just seen too much negativity and uh, too many bad things happen, haven't you? And with the red side winning on, I've just pens. seen everything. You know, uh, I've seen everything happen. Pistoni back pass, Unsworth right through to the modern day. I mean, we've seen it all. <laughs> it's totally bad. Um, Steve, Steve, come on. Let Let's try and I'm trying to think a little bit more positively. Let's take the Man City game from mm. all the energy, the intensity, and the quality from the Man City game. And to some extent, right, I Leeds want to and be Brantford. optimistic. You're right. Man City were really, really good side that came to us, and we basically stopped them from playing their normal game. That is and the way to effective. approach it. So we can do that again against Spurs, can't we, Steve? With we Damari can, Gray returning, you. with the Van der Beek coming back in, with the options we've got, potentially Calvert Lewin, um, and uh, you know, Richarlison still uh Deli Ali, Van der Beek fit, Gukore and Allen. You know, there's no injuries in that sort of front. The midfield and front areas, your defence is a little bit suspect, probably at left back and in centre half now, unfortunately. But let's stay positive. Let's try and go there to try and get a result with a with a positive mentality. Um, that would be my well, thought. I've seen it all, Stevie. I know why you know. Right. If I was doing the team talk, I would I would say a completely different thing to what I'm saying now. I'm yeah. saying that we keep winning and losing, or we keep losing and losing, and then we get a glimmer of hope, and then we lose and lose and lose. So I'm saying if we can go to Spurs and get a point, that's a great point. No, it, it, in in But context, we can't play yeah, for the draw. We need to go there point. and play like ent- more enterprising than what we've done. Well, but he will. We also need an element of realism. He will. He'll go there and play. After 70 minutes, then we don't go for the win. We settle back. We, we take points. <laughs> <laughs> this is hilarious. Too negative. We're gonna have to go there. We're gonna go there and beat Spurs. I, I'm I'm calling it. I think I'd rather play a Spurs and like a Southampton and all these other teams because Spurs have got that mental. They, they bottle it. They've got the weakness that we that we can exploit. Mm. They I are think. fragile as well. They keep losing. Yeah. yeah, they lose every other game. So they are fragile. Yeah. Um, predictions then, Steve. Do I need need to ask? You're gonna go, go for one one. I'm gonna go for one one. <laughs> <laughs> but you do, you do know, going. Ryan, that um, if you are asked anyone to back a result, then it's 1-1 or 2-1 because those are the ones that they have the... You generally, across all matches... And all what odds are you giving me? It's what You're going to go... I reckon you're going to go 2-1 or something like that. No, but what odds are you giving out today on the Stevie G? Um... You can probably only get about fives for a, for a 1-1 draw in that sort of match. But as I said, 
it's an ambitious thing to think that it's going to be a draw because neither side draw game. Neither side draw games. Love it, Stevie. Thank you so much. That is a, that is a really interesting piece of information. Um, if you're new to the channel, please like, or well, subscribe, I should say. And uh, all our regulars, make sure you like the video wherever you're watching. We're close to 900 subs, so we just think we need five more. I'm sure we'll get there very soon. If you're new, hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much. And finally, just before we wrap things up, um, Neverton's director of football, the new appointee, Thelwell. Uh, he's had his first interview with the club this afternoon. I've just watched it 20 minutes long. He said all the right things, everything I would have expected. And interestingly enough, uh, Steve, I don't know how much you know about this guy. First and foremost, he was at Wolves when they were in League One and got them to the Premier League with his recruitment and philosophy. So that's really positive. The youngest um, roster of players at New York Red Bulls and got them to the playoffs. So some really good successes. Uh, he's an English, you know, he's a UK-based director of football. His family are all from the Northwest. His dad is an Evertonian. He said 68 years of being a blue and he's honoured and privileged to be the Everton Director of Football. He's here to oversee all the supporting departments to Frank Lampard, including the medical services, recruitment, um, overseeing what happens in the academy. So there's so much, so many different things going on with him. Preliminary, 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 the recruitment. Preliminary. Yeah, the recruitment's going to be one of the most important things he touched on. He's already looking at targets and signings. Working with Frank, he's very enthusiastic and encouraged by what he's seen from Lampard already um, and is excited to build for the future and said that the motto, nothing but the best is good enough, is extremely important and something they want to bring into fruition and they have a plan in place. So there's so many positive things to take from that interview in Thelwell. We trust. Have you got anything to add uh, to that, Steve? Well, I trust the recruitment strategy from what I've seen, you know, with other recruitments. But having said that, some of the managers have been awful. But I think that he's got his work cut out. But it sounds like a really... Um, you mean you trust the appointment? You trust this appointment? That's what you're trying to say. Um, yeah, yeah, you've got to back this appointment. You've got, to, you've got to think that this was a really important move. And I think that I'm really looking forward to seeing. And it's not an overnight process, just like the first team. Yeah, but, I'm excited. You know, it's got to start top to bottom. I'm excited to see what he does. Uh, I really need to touch on this. I know I know we said 30 minutes, but a couple more minutes, please. Because Everton have um, uh, ending their partnership with Kazoo at the end of the season. Two-year deal, 10 million a year, I believe it was. The break clause was after two years. Uh, so they have parted terms. And Everton now, without USM, which is all a bit weird because Farhad Mashiri, the Everton majority shareholders, an 8% shareholder and chairman of the board at USM, who sponsor Everton, owned by a club, who's the chair. It's all very, very, very bizarre. It's like you having a company that's sponsoring yourself and then you're sanctioning yourself and saying, I'm not in partnership with you anymore, but it is, you are yourself. It's all, <laughs> I can't explain it, but it's all a bit bizarre, isn't it, Steve? Do you want to touch on that for me then? So Mashiri, his business. Well, I think he's, he's just letting go of the association that it has with Everton right now, just so that we can make a statement. Because Everton mm -hmm. are doing all the right things off the pitch, I believe. Yeah. You know, the stadium, giving kits to Boreham Wood. I mean, we are like a charity, aren't we? But I think with this move, this is a really, this is just getting a un getting united around the situation in uh, the Ukraine and uh, what's going on with the, the war against Russia. And we don't want to talk too much about football? politics, but Everton have got to make a contribution because they are the people's club mm -hmm. and they lead by yeah. example. So it's another question whether politics and football should be mixed so much. I think ultimately, you know, the Chinese have pulled out. They're not going to show any fixtures this weekend in solidarity with Russia, who are one of their allies. So that obviously, I don't know what the knock-on effects ultimately are going to be. If it goes to a, a major war, it's going to be catastrophic, obviously, for everyone. But even on this scale now, I think there's going to be some impacts, you know, at football level as well. Not that it is important in the grand scheme of things, but it, it's... Um, it's mad, really. It would be Everton to have owners with sponsors, that, you know, all to do with Russia. It, it would only happen to us uh, potentially now £30 million a year down because of the USM, the Megafon, the Yo... Uh, I can't remember. There's another company. And also the Kazoo Not deal. Not just us, Ryan, though, no, but there are, there are other richer clubs that play in blue that have been, you know, affected by this sorts of thing. And there are... You know, there are lots of people around the world that are majorly affected, but, you know, mm. let's not 
forget there's be- there's people in Ukraine that, that, that are really suffering right now. Mm. And so the money contribution, hopefully Everton will be able to like get around this in the future. But, you know, the lives that are being lost can never be, re- re- you know, replaced. And, and, and it's... Well, you can't mix thoughts, it because really, if you start... If you start actually taking into the context of what's going on over there, then the actual me asking you the question about whether it's going to impact our financial fair play and we're going to really struggle and potentially, you know, well, really, really it suffer. From with... Everton's point of view, yeah. you think that they're going to be able to absorb the situation. But if they didn't do what they've done, and this is a crucial thing here, that the image that Everton have can be scarred. You see, people look at you and go, well, you've got a Russian font, so you must be backing what's going on. Are you condoning what's going on out there? Brilliant. So I think that Everton have done the right move. If, yeah, again, we've lost out financially, that wouldn't surprise me. But, you know, and you expect, day, we've, this, you're expecting new sponsors to come in, don't we've, you? We've ended up with this sort of situation. Who would you like to see sponsor um, Everton? I believe like they're in Tampax the race for it. Everton. They look quite good. I'd like to see Tampax sponsor Everton because we're always going through bad periods and I think that'd be a really good sponsor for us. Figment, uh, no, any chance of them sponsoring? On a realistic, <laughs> on a, on a realistic note, um, I'd be happy with um, with Danka because we won something when they were the sponsor. <laughs> Not auto and, audio um, services. And it and it wouldn't be... Uh, no, you not know, Select Interiors, none of these companies. I... Uh, I think anyone that wants to sponsor Everton obviously doesn't have a lot of commercial acumen because of the way we've been playing. But you know, what are the on, connotations on the of apart, what's the, the brand connotations of being with Everton? What would you say if you were selling Everton sponsorship to someone? If you're the sales Sorry, manager, what are the for, connotations? We if you're the sa- with a very loyal fan base that um, I've just had to pay extra for the season ticket, so have no money to spend with your, your goods. David, David's furious. Um, he hasn't got the money. No, no, you, so no. You're you're, you're in charge of you're David. in charge of Everton sponsorship now. Tell me why I should sponsor Everton. Mm. Why would a club? You know, we're struggling. We've got fans. We're we're, mo- we're moving. The we're moving forward. We are moving forward as a, as, a, as a club, and, and the heritage and history goes with that. But we're moving into a new stadium with um, a real sense of optimism, a young, progressive manager, a team that is being rebuilt, but there's so much opportunity. So you can get an investment with us at a lower cost than you might get with a more proven, established club that are flying high. So hunt with Everton and, um, and, and you'll, go, you'll go far in the next few years. Stevie G, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much, Stevie, for coming on. Pleasure as always. Absolutely fantastic. Yours truly. On everything. What's on the cup? What's on the mug? Anything worth showing? Uh, This is just a a blue piano, just to remind me to do some practice. Um, But I think, I think, yeah, we're looking forward to Monday under the lights. So come on, you blues. And the reality is we'll all be sat on the couch feeling very, very anxious. You'll see the Sky Sports. Come on, and you'll be pissing your pants. I always thought, Ryan, pack. maybe we should go live at half time. We've never done it before. Going live at half time is as raw as it's going to get. For 15 minutes, we can have a moan. <laughs> don't know. It, it's be lucky to get it's anyone either that or we listen to Carragher and Neville jabber on no. about, you know. I know. It's a, it's a good it's a good idea, Steve. We'll think about it. Thank you so much for coming on, guys. Thanks for watching. Follow Everton, please subscribe. And if you're if you're new, make sure you do so because it is really important to us. And also like the video and comments retrospectively will be listened. Sorry, will be read by yours truly. It can be passed on to Steve if you've got anything, any questions or anything you want to ask him. Please put in the comments, and I will fire them at him for him to ignore. Right, guys, thank you so much. Speak to you soon. Stevie, smile, wave at the camera. Cheerio. Bye. Cheerio.